So the last set of lessons for unit two are about colligative properties and separating methods. Since our solutions, our combination of a solute and a solvent, involve combining pure substances, all right, that causes a change in their generic properties, which is the colligative properties. There's also talking about how to separate them back out. So just to kind of review on some of the physical properties of a pure substance. All right, so here we're talking about before our solution is made. We have our solvent and our solute, which are pure substances before they're combined. And then they're turned into a solution between a physical mixing process. But the substances prior to being mixed have their own inherent freezing and melting points, condensation boiling points, and vapor pressure. All right, top two I'm sure you're probably familiar with. Freezing or melting point is the temperature at which the conversion between solid and liquid occurs. Condensation or boiling point, also sometimes called evaporation point, it's another word for boiling, um, is the temperature at which the transition between gas and liquid occurs. And then vapor pressure is something maybe you haven't heard of before. And this actually ties in really closely with boiling point. Um, but when you have a liquid, at the surface of the liquid, there's always a certain amount of the molecules that will just kind of spontaneously go into the gas phase. All right, so right at the surface. So right here's your surface. And this property is dependent on the substance. All right, like water tends to have a lower vapor pressure because it has really strong intermolecular forces from the hydrogen bonding that holds the liquid molecules in the liquid form. But other things like, say, gasoline, if you've ever filled up the tank or been there when your parents have done that, maybe you can smell the gasoline in the air. That's because gasoline has a very high vapor pressure. All right. So the molecules of gasoline are much more apt to spontaneously go into the gas phase. And that's why you're able to smell them because they're in the air as a gas. All right, so how this ties into colligative properties. So that's that word, it's pronounced colligative. All right, so when you have a pure substance used as a solvent and it gets combined with the solute, that causes some changes in the solvent's inherent physical properties. All right, so these, these new properties, these new boiling points, new melting points, new vapor pressures that occur, we call them colligative properties because it's the combination of the solvent and the solute that causes slight changes in the solvent's inherent physical properties. All right, and what, what this does is really, if you're dealing with a liquid solvent, it's gonna make your liquid solvent more likely to stay a liquid. All right, so I want you to think about this. All right, so talking about these different things like freezing point, boiling point, vapor pressure. All right, so when you add, say, salt to water, all right, it makes it more likely that your water is gonna stay in the liquid form. So if you think about normally water freezes at zero degrees Celsius, what do you think is gonna happen to that freezing point when we add salt to it? All right, what direction is that freezing point gonna go in order to be more likely to stay a liquid? All right, so we're just gonna, all this is gonna be examples for water all right, but the freezing point is gonna go from zero degrees Celsius to less than zero degrees Celsius. So that freezing point goes down. For those of you that have ever lived somewhere where it snows, or those of you that live, you know, like up in the Flagstaff or areas of higher elevation and you experience snow every winter, you might be familiar with the fact that they put salt on the roads, all right? That salt melts the snow because it decreases the freezing point of the water, right? It means it, I mean, it needs to be colder out to get the water to freeze. All right. Likewise, boiling point, all right, so the temperature at which water boils, normally that's 100 degrees Celsius, all right? And what direction is the boiling point going to have to go in order to keep it as a liquid? All right. That means that your boiling point is going to be greater than 100 degrees Celsius. So that boiling point goes up. All right. 
if you have ever cooked pasta before. All right, a lot of times it's, it's, there's lots of debate online as to whether or not you should add the salt first or later, because it helps with boiling. You should add the salt afterwards. All right, there's also, if you've ever looked at it, you're like, okay, you got your water boiling, you pour the pasta in, suddenly the boiling stops, and then shortly it picks up again. That's because the starch on the outside of the pasta molecules dissolves into the water and increases the boiling point. So more heat from your stove is needed to get it back to boiling. All right, so it decreases freezing point, increases boiling point. And then vapor pressure, all right, so a higher vapor pressure means it's more likely to boil. A lower vapor pressure means it's less likely to boil. So our vapor pressure is going to go down as well. All right. All right, so just a summary of these colligative properties. All right, you've got your freezing point depression, the temperature at which something freezes drops so that it's harder to make it freeze. Boiling point elevation, all right, so the boiling point temperature goes up, which again makes it harder to boil. So both of these are trying to keep that solvent in its liquid form. And then vapor pressure depression, all right? So less of the gas is likely to spontaneously go into that gaseous state. Or sorry, less of the liquid is going to spontaneously become a gas. So it's gonna stay in liquid form, all right? So these trends, as far as freezing point and vapor pressure going down, boiling point going up, are important patterns to remember when answering questions about colligative properties. Another quick thing to note is that the more solute you add, the more likely or the stronger effect these colligative properties have. All right, so if you add a lot of salt to water, it's going to really depress the freezing point and really elevate the boiling point. All right, that sort of thing. So a quick sample type question, all right, so which colligative property is employed when a coolant is added to a car's radiator to keep it from overheating? All right, so those of you that are good with cars probably understand what coolant is and things like that, um, but essentially you want to keep that coolant in its liquid form because that's going to help whisk away water or whisk away heat, absorb some of the heat from the engine. All right, if the coolant turns into a gas, it's not gonna do this very well. All right, so coolants have colligative properties in them. They have things dissolved in the liquid to keep it in that liquid form. So thinking about a car and we're heating it, if we're heating up the liquid, and we're trying to prevent it from becoming a gas, which colligative property is going to best help with this? All right. Considering that we're talking about heating, I think you can very easily knock out the freezing point depression. All right, so now we've got these two things, boiling point and vapor pressure, that are both kind of related to keeping the liquid in this in its liquid form all right but which one is most directly tied to increasing temperature all right so i'm hoping you are thinking boiling point elevation all right if we increase that boiling point then it's more likely to stay in a liquid and keep doing its job as its coolant and then this should be a quick review we talked about lots of these when you were in chemistry A, but if you need your memory jogged on some of these, all right, so when it comes to separating your solutions, there's a bunch of different things you can do. There's distillation, which is if you've got two liquids that you combine together, they might have different boiling points, so you can boil one off to separate it from the other. You can also use this for a solid uh, like salt water, all right? If you boil off the water, the salt will be left behind. Um, fractionation is actually 
very similar to distillation. It's just a, a more precise version of it. So again, you're going to separate liquids by their different boiling points. It's just the liquids can have closer together boiling points. Like they're only a couple of degrees different. All right. So like a, a real world example of this is when gasoline is formed or oil is processed and turned into gasoline and kerosene and jet fuel and things like that. All of those fuels have similar boiling points, so we have to use this process of fractionation in order to separate them completely. Chromatography, you might remember this from your first lab in chemistry A, all right, you allow substances to flow across a stationary plane of some sort that could be, you can do this with gases, you can do this with liquids, all right, this is actually something that is used in drug testing as a real world example. Um, you can take the blood and let it kind of travel up the paper, and if there's drugs in there, certain ones will get left behind at certain points. Um, filtering is probably something you've done if anybody in here drinks coffee or if you cooked pasta. All right, this is a good way to separate solids from larger, sorry, larger solids from liquids. And then osmosis was one we didn't talk about, I know, in chemistry A, but you've probably talked about it in biology before. All right, so osmosis is kind of the, a way that our bodies filter things. All right, so osmosis allows water to cross a membrane, holding other solutes behind. All right, so it's kind of like a, an internal, like natural filter sort of thing. So just a, a question that you might see is you have two liquids in solution. Those solutions have different boiling points. Which of the following is the best method to separate them? So, and actually I pulled this off of a test. So this is, I'm hoping you can at least narrow it down to these two because these both have to do with separating by boiling points. And I'm going to have to go in and change the test to make sure both of those get answered correctly because it doesn't give you any information about, you know, how close the boiling points are. So in my mind, the best method is probably going to be fractionation because that's going to help you regardless of how close the boiling points are. So I'm going to make sure both of these count as being right. Another one is a separation method, getting chemicals out of your blood, all right? And I intentionally kind of went over the last slide on purpose for you guys so that you know that this is chromatography. But good luck on your test. <laughs>